welcome back to the journey with me Fonte and um, today I'll be talking all about um, African fashion and you know the how the, the it's almost like explosive this moment we have been a lot of um, um, world-class designers models and um, you know people within the industry and with me today is my guest Girl Thompson because she's an actress, um, a model, and just about everything. And she hosts her own TV shows as well. So we have a lot to talk about <laughs> in the industry. Stay with me. She's actually my friend, so today we're going to have it's a different setting, not that kind of seriousness. So we're going to feel the vibe. So you stay with us and let's go through her journey, my friend Girl. <laughs> um, model, <laughs> you know, you, you're just, you know, the industry is just like the industry has been waiting for you to come, you know, both the Nollywood and the uh, uh, fashion yeah. industry yeah. and the TV. Let's yes. talk about, tell me about it. How did all this start? Um, well, fun thing, first of all, thank you. Can I just say that I'm, I'm loving this? Yeah. And, you know, you're just looking amazing yourself. <laughs> I, think, I think the industry is also waiting for you, whenever oh, you're ready. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, oh God, the journey. This is the journey. Yes. I forget that. Mm -hmm. This is the journey of fun <laughs> So how did you start? Yeah, modeling. Did you ever know you were gonna be a model? How did you did you stumble it into it? Or, um, you know, so it's it's maybe it's half and half. Okay, so when I was much much younger, I used to live in um, Fulham, mm -hmm. and I remember I went for um, a what I now know was a casting at the time. I didn't know what it was called, <laughs> and um, when we got there, this guy I remember he was so huge and very horrible man. He said to me. Oh, um, you you might have to lose some more weight, you know. And at the time, I was so skinny, you know, as a teenager, so skinny. And this man said, "Oh, you have to lose more weight." I have to say, I, I wasn't really. I was in college. I wasn't paying attention. And my sister was like, "You're not doing that. Forget it. You're going to go and study medicine or law or something. Forget it." And and that was it for me. I didn't think anything else about it. And then about maybe four or five years ago, you know, when there was loads of you don't dance with me in the chairs and you know. I, um, I had to give up my job and because I'm such a restless person, I'm always looking for something to do, I thought I can't, I can't just sit down and not do anything and that's actually how we started. So one day a friend of mine who was um, just designing her own line yeah. out of London said to me, you know they're looking for models for London Fashion Week, Africa Fashion Week. I'm like, I've never been a model before. She's like, just apply, you never know. I'm like, what am I going to apply for? I don't, I don't model. Cause I just go, well, I think you're going to wear my clothes because you're my muse. And da, 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 da. So I turned up. I just turned up. And that I, was it. I didn't have any portfolio. That was, that was it. No right. portfolio, nothing. I just walked in. And since then, you've done how many now? How many? Yeah. Do you know how many African Fashion Week now? I think I've done four oh, now. Yeah. The and London, London, London Fashion Week must be about eight or ten. Fashion finest, with yeah. Fashion Finest. Yeah. And not with Fashion Finest. I've done um, college uh, graduate Fashion Week as well. Okay. Um, I, I have to say, Fashion Week, I, I, I've lost count. I don't know. How many I've done? <laughs> so, um, now, uh, London Fashion Week is just around the corner. Yeah. Next weekend. Yes. So what are we expecting? Are you are you on? I am. Yes, I'm. I'm walking. Yes. Um, I'm actually excited because apparently this season there's going to be a lot of new fabrics that are. This is the word I heard. Sumptuous. Oh. So I'm. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> what is sumptuous? I mean, sumptuous and nice, and that's how they explained it to me. I was talking to this uh, designer. She was telling me, oh, I think this season there's going to be loads of sumptuous fabrics on the catwalk. I'm like, okay. As long as I get to wear it, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel? Um, being on the car for you know wearing different designs from different designers and then coming back to reality how are you do you know it is so bizarre I, I would almost say it was this industry was made for me I don't feel one way or another when I'm on the wrong way I don't see people I just don't see anyone I just walk my aim is to go towards the light and the camera take pictures, make sure I produce good pictures for the for the garment owners, you know, the designers. Okay. Um, hopefully get a, a picture or two for my own portfolio. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. I don't really see people until the whole show is over. Yeah. And it's like, hey, hi, hi. But 
I don't feel any difference. But it's it's a privilege though. Yeah. It's really a privilege when you you know, especially when you've worked for somebody before oh, okay. and they go, I want you back, I want you again. Or it really is a privilege. So wow. yeah. Now and just so you you're doing them. Um, uh, you're you're one of the stars again in the Nollywood now. You can do a man and man. You know, you stand in yes. two of her, his major yes. movies, and those two movies are really making absolutely, waves. Absolutely, absolutely. I think you know what? I'm so lucky. My mom says it's not luck, that is God. So I've been blessed. <laughs> and my name isn't God saying that, it means blessing. So yeah. maybe my name is manifesting yeah, in my life. Yeah, you know? Exactly. Um, so yeah, I have been lucky. I, I played them. Um, the first one I did was Onyozi, The Messenger, with Toke mm-hmm. Bakasi. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I played the lead, and I've never done anything before, like acting. That was my first time acting anything. Yeah. So a lot of people like, you know, and that's your first time you've got the lead role, but when God decides to bless you. You know, lead role, do you, do you have to be... I tell people, see, I always tell people, it's not how long you've been in a thing, Absolutely. it's how well you it's are right. doing. You know, I so, agree. and I agree. You, you, you know, your, your role in that messenger, that, you know, just was a knockout. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I like to hear that because it keeps me. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying because you're my friend. Because I'm what you know me. You know me. I'm very critical. I'm very critical <laughs> myself. I decide myself to do that. To the level that you know, I you know. Know. Think, you know, sometimes my mom looks at me and is like, stop, stop now. <laughs> no. So yes, me. you know, on your Z, how many weeks or months or whatever? How long was it? This in May, filming it. Filming it. Yeah. Filming on your Z was, I think. Three weeks to a month max. I don't even think it was up to a month okay. that we filmed it. Um, Obi is very, very strict like that. He will tell you from the first to this date we're filming, and it's back, 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 back shooting. But I also realized I actually like working like that because you're focused and you just do it, get it out of the way, move on to your next project. Mm-hmm. So it, it took maybe about three weeks and we were, we were done. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was so much fun. Like it was my first ever anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I don't know what to expect. So what I'm told is what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but. The experience just set me on a completely different level. So yeah. now, sometimes when I'm talking to people, they're looking at me like you're a diva, and I'm like, no, really. It's, <laughs> what, it's what does that mean? Being you know, a diva, knowing what you want, knowing what you're doing it, absolutely, or oh, what you expect people to do. So okay. you know, I expect to be told where I need to be. I expect to be given a rundown of you know my um, schedule for the next day. It, I think it's just because that's the way it will be worked with me. And that's professional. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I see his team with their PR, they're, they're running their PR very well. Yes, and yes, they do. To be honest, I'm really proud of Obi and his production. Yeah. You know, each time I watch any of his movies, I it's on a different level. Yeah, yeah. If, I, if I, he needs to put his movie, well, let me not say what I need to say. What I need to say. What I need to say. Let's focus on you. Okay. So, <laughs> The messenger mm-hmm. and you've done the latest one now the yes, Oxford, Oxford Garden. Tell me about oh, you shaved your hair and I oh my did. Yes, I did. I shaved my head. I played um a sick girl, a girl who's very, very sick with cancer, yeah. and who's about to die, mm-hmm. and who decides that she wants to do there are a few things on her bucket list that she decides she really wants to do. And as fate will have it one day she met what I call a perfect stranger who mm-hmm. agrees to like help her achieve some of her bucket list. Mm-hmm. So that's really the the base basis of the story, the story yeah. yeah but then obviously along the way there are other things that you then yeah, discover. don't need to give it to yeah them. absolutely if you need to if you want to watch the Oxford Gardens in fact it's top now you need to just go and get the story out there uh, yeah absolutely just you, you know just to get a little bit about yeah, it. it's a beautiful it's a beautiful movie I yeah, considering really. that I shaved my hair you know like all we want you to, to if you're going to play role play well, well which I don't actually mind it's taught me a lot I don't so mind. What, what was the like not just for us was us for Gabby now mm-hmm. as an actress what's your biggest challenge what has been or what is you know what I think my I always thought my biggest challenge was mm-hmm. was um crying like that on set mm-hmm. and um Recently, I just finished shooting another movie, mm-hmm. and um, but before I did that, somebody did a, a master class of something, acting and emotions and what have you, and I went and I thought, you know, whatever, let me just go. So I went and there were a few things that she gave us tips and said, you know, practice this. And I have to say, for a long time now, I've been practicing it. And so this past movie, I just finished shooting last week, um, 
it, there was such a intense movie. I had to cry a lot the whole time. I just spent crying. And actually, when it was time to do it, everything I, I pra- I've been practicing that I learned from the masterclass came in like this. Oh. And it wasn't like once, twice. I think she just cried the whole of the movie. And each time I was able to deliver, and I'm like, oh, okay. That was not no, 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 make, Don't make, um, um, you know, crying to be your signature now. No, 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 no. It was just the, the idea that I always thought, why, how come I can't just sit there and just cry when people demand it of me? I have to really think hard. No, what I mean is this, like, um, you know, there are certain actresses. Like, for example, um, um, what's her name? Ozoku? Um, Pat- so, uh, Patience. Patience, sorry. Ozoku. Patience, Ozoku. Now, she's known for, like, wicked... Okay, that's what and, she means. You know, like, like, yeah. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> no I, I don't think I could be typecasted if I wanted to even. Because okay. I think I... I'm, I'm too diversified. I can't help myself. Okay. So I don't. And besides, I always, I always look for roles that I've never played before. Mm-hmm. So I'm always like, I've got, I actually got recently sent two scripts. So it's a very exciting time. I'm very happy. And and um, one of them is something completely different from what I have ever thought I could even do. You know, is playing a spy and being convincing. So I, I don't think I'll, I, I'll try not to get attacked. All these things happening now. Did you ever want? Did you ever like growing up? Mm. Thought you were going to be doing this? No, growing oh, no. up I thought I was going to be a newscaster. Okay. Yeah, I used to. I used to get newspapers. But you're still casting it now. I you're suppose still on the so. TV. I suppose so. In a way, everything kind of like it the buzz together. The, the buzz, the buzz TV show. Yeah. Um, what's the, the other one uh, with um, Ko? Oh, oh politics. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Which other one you are on? Um, what else? What uh, else? I think there's another one on TV as well. You're doing. Um, no, that's just this two for this now. Two. I did one before with um Victor. Okay. So that was a while back, and then it was KO, and now it's a Buzz TV show. Okay. So and they're also, two different things actually, politics and just entertainment. But it's TV, isn't it? Like, on screen. So that means on screen is just for you. I, I, I would like to think so. Because <laughs> I enjoy it, so I would like to think exactly. so. Now, you also were in um, Housewives and Girlfriends. Yes, yes. It's a series, isn't it's it? It's a series, yeah. It's still on. It is still on, apparently. It's still showing, I think it's on uh, AMC. Okay. I think a movie on Magic Channel. I can never get it right. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was a good experience as well. Oh my god, you know, you just reminded me. Sometimes I do a lot of things and. You, you I forget. Remember, okay. Yeah, I, I just forget. But yes, that was a good one shooting. It was and directed by directed and produced no produced by Rhoda Wilson. Rhoda Wilson, yeah. Um, and she did so well. It was like she was trying to set a standard of mm. you know filming that was higher than the norm. And I think she achieved it. I think mm-hmm. she achieved it. Yeah. Moving on, um, with Girl Thompson, uh, actress, um, TV presenter, and um, a model at the same time, and she does a bit of um. um Styling, fashion, you know, personal styling, and a lot. Although she most times she just she doesn't take she doesn't take herself so seriously on those things. But I keep reminding her, look, you have the talent, and you have, and she hosts events as well. So now yeah, let's talk about all the awards. You've been since last year, you've been banking all of them, Best CA Award, and. Yes, wow. I'm actually, I'm so excited. Yeah, you know, thank you for to see that award for my my award. That was fantastic. I, you guys were crazy. I was so it was so unexpected. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm so so grateful. You should have said that I brought my award actually. <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a show up. Um, yes, again, that's one of the things I was not expecting. Okay, because I look at it and think there's so many people in the industry been doing this thing for a long time before I came along. But it's not it, again. It has nothing to do with. If you, I, I, I was telling somebody, you know, I'm very, I'm very blunt when it comes to things like that. So I said, see, you've been, a, you've been in leadership position for twenty years. Yeah. Does not make you a leader. True, true. As simple as that. So you carry on with the, tell me the awards. Yes. So I had, I received them. Um, okay. So. Uh, C, C, I'm sorry. C L C L awards, yeah. I best model, best model, best model and best TV presenter. So that was two back to back. Wow, that was great. That was unexpected, but that was great. Um, better, I had best uh, media personality, mm-hmm. and then I also received one from the um, oh, they'll kill me. Uh, T M squared. Uh, theater production mm-hmm. here for um, the play that we did. We did the uh, Ola Rotimi's um, okay, the stage the play. God, the stage yeah. play, okay. God, not to play. Yeah, okay. So we did over four days in okay. um, 
uh, what's it called, the theatre in Stratford. And it was it was actually very good. I enjoyed it. Again, I didn't think I was going to, you know, again, my first theatre play. Okay. I don't know what to expect. And I played the very controversial, not controversial maybe, but um, a weird role. It was a man's role, but I took it on and played it as a woman, mm -hmm. you know, adapted it to him. I just went to direct, I'm like, I want something challenging to do. And he's like, well, we're looking for someone to play this role as a man. I'm like, let's try it as a female. He I wasn't convinced, but I said, just watch, let's just do it. And we did it. And you know, we had two, um, two people, different random people saying, I don't think that role should be played by a man ever again. Oh so I got an award for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Bertha as well. And Bertha, yeah. yeah. Bertha. With, with the first, is it? Oh, well, yes, yes, yes. The, the show, the first TV show, won an award for best TV show, mm -hmm. best entertainment TV show. Yes. And you're, I think you're the lead, the, the lead presenter, is it? Female lead. I'm, I think we're all equal. I, I, I don't know. I just. I just do my own thing. The thing, the good thing about the buzz is that it's got segments. It's got mm -hmm. tiny segments. So we have uh, music, we have fashion, we have film. Okay. In, you know, so the tiny, and then we have like gist. So the mm -hmm. tiny little things that people, different people present different segments. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 it's not about being lead or anything. It's about who presents what. Mm -hmm. So I do fashion and news, mm -hmm. and Dami does the press play which is um uh, filmed okay. and nd does countdown to music mm -hmm. so it works yeah we've heard of all the shiny parts of it mm -hmm. and um, i'm aware that you know creative people yeah they probably sees the result of what we're seeing yeah. but there are so many times when behind the scene we are carrying our hearts out <laughs> absolutely i want my audience to hear those moments that you just cry <laughs> those moments you know because you see the, the essence of this show is to tell people that you are not alone whatever you're going through yeah it can never yours can never be the worst and no matter how bad it is mm -hmm. there is it's always going to be there's always going to be the morning to yeah come. So, absolutely so we like to inspire so let me this i've heard you you know you've achieved a lot of things and you know but behind the scene what happens um yeah so i mean you know whatever for me i am a christian first and foremost i'm a catholic and i practice my faith and i think that's helped me a lot mm -hmm. going through this whole journey because it's a very fickle and fake industry if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to God for the fact that I did not start up when I was 16 or 15. You can imagine how my head would have messed up. Mm -hmm. So by the time I started, I was mature enough to say, no, I don't want that. I will not do that and you cannot force me. And so because of that, the, the difficulty that you face, such as, for instance, maybe say a shoot, for instance, a model shoot, you could, you could be there from morning till night and not eat anything because they don't want your tummy to bulge, they don't want you to be sluggish, you know, there are a lot of things behind that. When you're on set filming, you could be outside filming, it'll be very, very cold and there is nothing you can do. Some days, I mean, I can't really feel so bad myself because even the producers or directors, it must be worse for them. Some days you get on set and something happens, an accident or plans for and somebody doesn't turn up and all the cast and crew there will just have to turn and go to come back another time and face all of those things and i think the worst bit of it is not knowing where your next bread is coming from if that makes sense because yeah. it's not a steady job i was going to ask you that i was going to ask a lot of times when you know you're not getting called you're not you know you left all those phone calls Absolutely. you're waiting for no emails no emails and nothing things. You know, that's why a lot of people supplement with doing other works, which, you know, I used to do. I used to work for a law firm and um, I'll go in part time and do whatever. Every now and again, they still call me and I'll go and do something if they're really choked up otherwise. But, you know, I'm lucky because I do so many things. I don't just do in one between, thing yeah. in between. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it helps in the sense that there is never a time now where I am idle doing absolutely nothing mm -hmm. and, and that's why i like it because it keeps me out of trouble <laughs> <laughs> it keeps me out of trouble so yeah. what's next what's uh, what uh, what is girl up to next um where is girl heading to let me put it that way where am i heading to Ooh, okay that's a that's a tough question for now i want to concentrate a lot on my acting so i'm hopefully going to act in class i cannot act class is cool this September, okay. it is expensive. Mm -hmm. It is so expensive. 
but um, with the grace of God and, and, and everything is achievable. So I want to do that because I believe in whatever you do, give me your best. Yes, yes. So I'm, I'm going to do that. And um, the, the TV show that we're doing, as um, we've got um, a, co a couple of TV stations back in Nigeria who are very, very interested and, you know, it's paid as well. So that is, you know, a good thing. And we're looking to, it just started season three. Mm -hmm. We're looking to make it bigger and better yeah. and bolder. So, you know, that would be great. The modern thing, you mm -hmm. know, so tell me the stereotyping, skin tone, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Um, you know, with that, with that skin tone thing, it is a problem, mm -hmm. you know, um, because you find that people with my skin tone tend to be the ones that get overlooked a lot. And most of the time, people want people who are very, very, very fair skinned or people who are very, very, very dark skinned. And then the ones in the middle, that spectrum is just ignored half of the time. Mm -hmm. And it is quite difficult sometimes because sometimes people forget that, especially when they're using black people or they want to say African whatever they're doing, African themed shoots for instance, mm -hmm. they forget that Africa is actually a spectrum of colour from white to very dark. Yes, when yes, you yes. find people have this mm -hmm. in their We even have a Venus. Of course we do, yeah. of course we do. But people have in their heads what it means to be African. So sometimes you get very dark skin tone people with this uh, maybe a carrot scarf and they go, Mother Africa is like really, Mother Africa is all woman in every shade and skin tone. But Again, for me, I think that the grace of God is with me, that I am not bothered by such things. I choose not to see them. So if you don't want me, I just assume it's because I'm not the right person for your product and I move on. I, dwelling on it can actually cripple you. You can just decide, you know what, I'm not applying for things anymore. I'm not going for castings or auditions. But you can't do it like that. You just have to keep pushing, keep going. Because the more people see your face, mm -hmm. the more they begin to identify you to something mm -hmm. but if you stay away and hide away you know it's the people who get seen that are seen as okay you know you're the one who's representing what we want so i think it's up to everyone to everybody to join hands in making sure that they know go over and over and over get seen push it out there show the world that actually you're african i'm african she's african you know all of us are african yeah. but in our own different mm -hmm. ways yeah. so you know there is that um there is also the the size issue going on, you know, you sometimes you're too big, you're too small. You know, most of the time it's always you're too you're too big, which gets me going. So now I'm very glad that the fashion council has said they don't want people who are past the, below a certain size. Because it becomes unhealthy. You yeah. see girls who are literally yeah. starving themselves just so they can yeah. You see designers making clothes that just too tiny, it's practically just, impossible. Absolutely, to yeah. wear. And being an African girl as well, I mean, I, I've never thought I had bum. Um, but they tell me, oh, exactly, you know, I keep wanting bum, and they tell me, your bum is too big. And like, seriously? <laughs> you know, so there are, there are challenges, but for me, my advice to anybody is, ignore them, don't look at them, just keep pushing, just keep doing what you're doing. At some point, you will force them to recognize you for who you are. That's yeah. my mission, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that, you, you work with several um, mostly African designers. Mm. What's uh, what's your perception of African design designs and designers? What? Yeah, the the, the buzz is there, mm. the noise is there, yeah. yeah. But the the real thing is it happening as in quality, commercials, yeah. and stuff. I think slowly, although I, I personally think it's a bit too slow for my liking, mm -hmm. but I think slowly they're beginning to come up. Okay. Certainly, slowly. certainly when I started um, uh, modeling, mm -hmm. uh, as an example, when I first ever did anything with Africa Fashion Week, you know, you saw designs and everything, which were great, but over the years that I've done them, I've realized they get better. They're getting better and better and better, so much so now that you see an outfit and you think, oh my God, that is so exquisitely made. Mm -hmm. So it is, in, in that sense, in sense of style and, you know, design and stuff, it's getting there. However, marketing-wise and, you know, making noise so that they can dominate the, the market, mm -hmm. there's only a very few names mm -hmm. that you hear. You know, you hear the names over and over, and over again. again. You but it has to do with PR. I keep saying, that's like, what I was about to say. this again with yeah. um, my last, um, uh, in my last show. Okay. Um, you know, we are talking about PR. Is it that, um, is it that, um, why, why is PR a problem for us? If you like, ask me personally, mm -hmm. I think it's because there is something about Africans and money. Mm -hmm. I don't think we like coughing out money 
the coffin had money to make money. Okay. And, you know, being an evil girl from Nigeria and you know my, my grandparents were into trading. I've always been taught that money brings money. Money, of course. You know? Yeah. So but I, I find that they're so sometimes reluctant to part ways with money to get good PR to represent them. Because if you look, the difference is actually PR. PR. That's what it is. That's that's all it is. Yeah, and you know, you know, now talking from the point of I'm a media mm. person now. Mm. When uh, you find out that communication, there's a huge communication yeah, yeah. gap mm. there that, um, you know, getting these people to like talk about their brands and actually branding, branding properly. properly. That's it. Branding yeah. is also another thing, which I think if you pay an expert to consult with you, look at it with you, design, and then, you know, brand you properly. Mm -hmm. Half of the time, that is what sells. I mean, the reason you and I will walk into a, a, a perfume shop and buy a perfume with big packaging, even without knowing what it smells like, exactly. and go, ooh, let me try that, because it looks good, it's mm -hmm. appealing. And I think a lot of the time, that's what we lack in the African industry, you know, fashion industry. How to not just in the fashion and, industry, and and not just in, 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 the, in the African community, community. we really need to start you know uh, the complacency of packaging. Packaging, absolutely. Yeah, we need to address that absolutely. in every area, in every aspect of the yeah. Area. I agree yeah. completely, but I think that's what I'm saying. I think it's coming on, okay. even though it's very slow, but it is coming on. That's what I'm saying. Like it's too slow for my liking because, as you rightly said, you hear the same names over and over again. But then when you do look at the same names, they're names who are constantly rebranding themselves over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the likes of um, Lisa Palawio Studios. You have um, Christy Brown from Ghana. You know, names like that are consistently making waves, and the reason is. Like Lisa is constantly rebranding, constantly, you know, and she wears her stuff, you see it, she makes it look good. They write about it, they talk about it, you're like, oh my god, I want it, even if it won't look good on you. But just the PR behind it, the branding behind it, you're like, yes, I want to be a part of that. That's what that's what we need to do more of. That's what we need to do. Exactly. So, um, in fact, we can go on and on and on and on. <laughs> on. It's so inspiring, you know, when you speak with someone who is actually in the industry and knows what, you know, is everything that is happening in the house. So again, it's my guest girl, Thompson Ngozi, you know, um, and we have to just call it a day for today. Mm -hmm. She will come back. Promise. I promise I will come back. She will come back as soon as most of the things she's doing, you know, are done, especially in um, Africa, um, London Fashion Week. Yeah. She will come back to give us the reports again how she did it <laughs> and what happened, what did she bring to the table, and so many things to talk about, you know. I'm sure your spirit is lifted already. So keep working on your journey until you get there. See you next time. Thanks.